we have um, got loads and loads of different sectors that we focus on. But this week, um, we are focusing on professional services. Now, by professional services, I mean... We talk a lot about driving physical football with bricks and mortar. We talk a lot about e-commerce, so driving sales online. But actually, professional services tend to be bookings. Um, so it is, you know, all about, I guess, you know, the kind of businesses on, on the high street around the UK that um, need to um, be stronger on social media or are really strong on social media um, and can give us good case studies um, for basically driving bookings. So. Um, without further ado, I'm going to get cracking today. Um, I apologise, I do have a little bit of a cold, so um, slightly more husky than usual, which I'm pretty sure I said last week as well, but it's just not gone, so I apologise. Um, <clears throat> so today we are looking at um, a couple of things. So remember, even though that we're talking about professional services, aka bookings, um, any business can use um, any of this. So I will be make sure I'm tailoring it to any business, but we're using case studies that need bookings, basically. Um, so how to use top tips and value on social media, and that would be to do a thing. So whether that's drive engagement, bookings, reach, anything like that. Um, using trending current events and memes for content. Um, how going live um, will bring you engagement, um, how to draw people in using reels, how to show the people behind your business to connect. And then as usual, we're going to go over the content calendar for the next couple of weeks and give you guys some ideas on how you could use the national campaigns, <clears throat> excuse me, national campaigns and content um, to create amazing content for your own businesses. So as usual, um, we help you guys um, learn how to get better at social from prioritizing um, your content and channels by learning from your competitors. So remember, there's various ways of doing this. Here, you can see that you've got, you can go into the engage section of maybe, um, and you can go in and you can look at the types of businesses. So here you can see different sectors. You can look at gyms, you can look at um, <clears throat> food and drink, hospitality businesses um, and you can add them as a group and then in there you can see all of the um, most engaged posts <clears throat> or most engaged posts by the most engaged businesses across the UK um, and they and basically it gives you a bit of a flavour for what the best of each sector are doing um, in that um, in the social media realm so again if you are I don't know a restaurant again here that's the restaurant so you can pick up like what other restaurants are doing so it doesn't have to be a direct competitor or it might be that actually you know beauty salon you want to look at other beauty salons that kind of thing so it's a really really good way to learn and then obviously you've got your main dashboard where you can learn and contrast and compare um, every week based on usually a direct competitor so um 79.1% of consumers in the UK spend over an hour on social media per day um, and only 19% of businesses have active social media accounts and I can't stress this enough we've just done a whole load of research if you've not checked it out on the maybe blog then please do but we worked with a bunch of businesses I think it was 1700 businesses in Herefordshire and the results were staggering in terms of the we gave them extra social media training basically did this to them um, and they saw a huge increase in physical engagement so aka like might be footfall or people physically engaging with them um, on the high street versus the 5,000 businesses in Herefordshire that didn't take part in um, the this so this is why these numbers are so important so so important because if you want to take um you know the rest of that 79.1 percent of consumers that are spending over an hour a day in social media and then you've got all these businesses that aren't active it's it's you know it's not even an even play, playing field you can just jump in so it's incredible right so maybe helps over um, 25,000 businesses getting more out of social media. So um, we help you guys compare your social media performance with any other business. We give you all the social media tools um, and insights you need to use um, to use it more effectively. And then we do this. You've got experts like me um, in marketing, social media. You've got amazing experts in PPC and, um, you know, like um, Facebook ads. You've got amazing content writers. We've got so many great experts behind the scenes and maybe. So use them. Go on. Get book your training. We'll do something every single day. We've also then got loads of resources of stuff that I've like recorded, stuff that some of the rest of the team have recorded, so that you guys um, can just keep upskilling. You know, it's there on the platform. It's all there. So just use it, please. And I'm going to get cracking. My spiel is done. So, um, this I'm going to start with as we talked about. So we're kind of looking at um how um 
how different types of services have used social media. Now, I've not really focused as much on services. And I think the thing is, is because a lot of people think that social media is about driving sales, but actually you can really use social media to drive brand awareness and bookings and people sharing to go, well, so maybe I, so this is an accountant, the female accountant, whilst I might not need an accountant, I know three other people that might need one. And so if this comes up in my feed, I might tag them in. So that's what, you know, a service-based um, business needs. So let's look at the female accountant. So um, might take a little second to load. Why is this not loading? So give me a second, guys. It is not happy. There we go. Okay. Instagram, having a little moment there. Right. Um, so this is a female accountant, right? So the female accountant, funnily enough, is all about a female accountant. Um, so it's about um, females within the accountancy sector. It is about, I guess, women supporting women. It is about, I guess, getting rid of the kind of stereotypes um, that might exist within the accountancy sphere. So here's their, her feed, as you can see. So, she, you know, she everything's very, very branded. Everything is very much, you know, around what, you know, what she does. And she's not, as you can see, maybe the most stereotypical um, of accountants that you would see. I know that she looks nothing like my accountant, as lovely as he is. Um, but basically, so the female accountant. And um, so this is a sleek, classy, professional um, post. And it's all about attracting the desired clients while offering great, great tips that anyone can use. So I'm going to talk about the post. So how do you professionally see tips and tricks, right? So that would make you go, hmm, okay, what's this all about? You know, you've got the really glossy image, um, which again, everything that she does is very glossy. So it's a targeted, probably more like, you know, to your female entrepreneurs, so that she understands it, or they, you know, they understand their audience. And then they've got the, how do you professionally say something? So that would make you go, wonder what that is. And as you can see, it's a carousel, we'll go into that in a second. But ever wondered how to ask those difficult questions professionally in the workplace? We've, confi we've compiled four of our favourites. So let's have a look. What you want to say is I deserve a raise. Now, I think most people could identify with that at some point. We've all felt that actually we should be paid for for what we do. Um, and here you can see they've said what you want to say. And then this is them giving you some hints and tips on how to say it. So given my contribution to the company's success, along with alongside the current market analysis of my role, I'd like to schedule time to discuss a salary review. Now that is helpful. That's not helpful just to, I guess, female business owners or business owners generally. That's helpful to anybody that's reading that going, I'm sitting in my job wishing that I had a raise and don't know how to ask for it. That personally, that I find mega helpful. Um, well, I'm burning out with this workload and your lack of support. So that's what you want to say. Basically, you're overwhelmed. How do you tell your boss or somebody within your team or even, you know, like your business partner, maybe that you're massively overwhelmed? How to say it? My productivity is being impacted by the overwhelming workload. Um, is there any support that you and the team can offer? It goes on. You expect me to do more of the same work, but pay me the same. Again, a lot of people will be experiencing that's very much all these things are topics of the now of the fact that businesses are struggling, the fact that the financial climate um, is a nightmare, um, the fact that we're all um, you know having to spend more, um, and a lot of a lot of people are earning a lot less or their wages haven't gone up. So these are all very timely. So this is all about topical things that get people chatting, that get people engaged. Um, so again, they're giving you some hints and tips on what to do. What you want to say, just leave me alone to get the job done, aka please don't micromanage me. And then you said, if you could give me some space to complete my work, that would be very helpful. Now, again, that is each to their own on that one, I would say. But basically, this is all about, so it's branded, so it's keeping it very much within um, her um, her branding. It is not necessarily about targeting people who are going to use an accountancy firm. It's actually more about people that are in jobs or people who like are managing employees, even maybe. Um but it's also just, it's, it's, you know, kind of for anybody within the business sphere. So they, but they understand their clients. They understand mainly what, A, what, what will attract them to click on something in the first place, tips and tricks. 
B, and they understand what people need right now, and that is support. So they're giving basically business advice. So then they've said, have something different to ask, leave it in the comments, and we'll share a professional response. In respect to the information above, this content is only for informational purposes and does not constitute any financial advice. So they've got to be very careful. So that is basically putting almost like terms and conditions in to say, you know, this is what it is, but actually, um, you know, be be careful with using it, that kind of thing. Um, so I really like this because what is it designed to do? So remember, we always talk about social media, there needs to be a purpose. So this is designed to get to provide, I guess, a bit more reach. So hopefully what you would do is you're much more likely to tag in a friend or somebody that maybe needs this right now. Maybe it might be a friend that has been struggling to ask some of these questions it might be yourself it might just be like you know like you it, it also provides trust so it would make me think well they're not selling me any of their accountancy services what they're actually selling me they're, they're giving me free advice as a professional one professional to another so again that's about providing trust it is brand recognition so they're reinforcing their brand with the color scheme um and then they are giving people a reason to want to engage as well so i think in terms of the reason that professional services need to use social media, yes, it is usually about making that consultation, making that booking, um, you know, wanting somebody to do something. But actually, in order to do that, you need to, especially in the professional setting, you need to have, if you're a mortgage advisor, if you are, well, anything to do with finance, anything at all, you need to have trust. I would be more inclined to trust this account off the back of something like this than if they were giving me, I don't know, top five tips to make some money book a book an appointment with me now I think well okay well that's nice but actually how helpful is that to me right this second because I can't maybe do any of these whereas this is all about free added value so just remember when you're thinking about social media whilst you always want people to do a thing you need to pepper your content with things like this things that are timely it might not even be anything specific to your business but anybody could do something like this you know it might be <laughs> It might be that you are a business that targets, I don't know, parents, and you could do this with parents, things you want to say to, I don't know, that annoying mum at school, or things you would love to say to your kids that you can't ever say and make it a bit tongue in cheek and fun, things that you would love to say to, um, I don't know, your boss about the fact that, you know, I don't know, you need time off, whatever it might be. Um, but you, you can see my point is that anybody could do this with their business. It's just about picking your audience, and thinking about what is timely to them at right now and then giving them some tips. That's it. And actually, you could get most of them probably from the likes of Instagram and Facebook already because the content will already be out there. Right. So this is CNS marketing. So here, I'm just going to have a little look at it. Why are you not letting me click on it? Sorry, this thing is not happy at all. So apologies in advance. Um, so this is CNS um, Media Limited. And what they've done is um, they are basically marketing um, and they've put the question no one wants to hear on a Monday morning. Um, and they've done a little gif, right? Do you know what? Let me go a bit rogue and let me just try and type it into Instagram and see if it comes up. Right. So normally the link should work, but for some reason it's not happy today, guys. Right, here we go. Do you know what we do this live? What can I say? So you see they do a few of these ones, right? So they are a marketing agency without the waffle. You know, you can see they obviously are going to use their um Instagram to try and drive new people to make bookings. Um to yeah like whether it's run their social media or do advertising that sort of thing and here they got more engagement um they got more engagement on this one sorry guys this is just make it it's logged me out and then it's making me log back in again do you know what i'm just going to go back apologies this is not happy at all um so it is um, basically they've used a meme. So they've used the Oscars, which was obviously very recently. They've used the Oscars. So um, the great thing about having national content or, sorry, or a national event or an international event or something big that's going on is 
that um, you can get some amazing, amazing content and repurpose it for um, your business. So what they've used it as, um, boss, can you do a 9 a.m. Zoom call? Me. And then it's the his face, like, which clearly freaking out going, why on earth would I want to do a 9 a.m. Zoom call? Which we've all been there. So that is taken as a little um, meme from the Oscars. Now, there are thousands of these hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these and it might be I don't know someone's outfit that's maybe elaborate and huge it might be a reaction we all remember the famous slap which happened um uh was that last year um lots and lots of memes about that some businesses used it some businesses didn't we've all remembered when they've said the wrong name um for oscars again that still gets wheeled out every now and again but even if it's not the oscars there are tons of other things that you could use but the point is is that people take these little stills and you could repurpose that for anything so literally this is boss can you do a 9 a.m zoom call me so this is all about the question that no one ever wants to hear on a monday morning so as a marketing agency they kind of want um to, they're connecting with businesses that's what they're doing so they're connecting with the amount of people that are going to be sitting there on social media scrolling mindlessly and see that and think that's quite funny so it makes you want to maybe tag in somebody or it makes you want to engage in it and think oh my god that's so me so that's what memes are all about it's about you connecting with it on a level where you go that is so one of my friends or that is so me again any business can do this they are all floating around literally you can do hashtag Oscars, meme marketing, meme of the day. So actually follow any of those hashtags and you'll find all of them and you just repurpose it for yourself. All they've done is they've added into their own branded um, thing. You can use Canva for that, guys. Um, so you could literally change the writing here and just use that image. And it could be anything. I mean, why would you make that face? It might be, um, I don't know, you might be a personal trainer and it might be something like when, you know, when I ask my clients, did you eat that pizza last night? And that's their face. It could be that you are a beauty salon and you're going, did you book it? Did you book in your wax before your holiday? No, you know, anything, any business could use that kind of thing. These are top off, the, off my head examples, but meme marketing is actually huge. So I recommend if you do want to kind of pepper your content with things that can get people engaged, make sure you're following all of the big events and make sure you're following these kinds of hashtags like your meme of the day, meme marketing. But yeah, things like the Oscars, any of the big, you know, like your BAFTAs, all of your like, you know, big events and things like that always good and then you've got celebrities that are always used for memes so things like your Kim Kardashians your Adele's your um like you know all of them are all used loads in memes so just make sure that again you are following some of those as well because you will find something you'll find something that just tickles you and it will be something that you immediately want to use and you will use them for tagging use them for engagement use them for basically a bit of two-way conversation with your customers it's great Okay, so next we have um, Noura Hibbert. So she actually is very much Instagram. So she's a manifestation and mindset coach. And what she obviously uses social media for is to show what she can do to, um, I guess, help people build up their businesses and their lives using various coaching techniques, which a lot of coaches do on social media. So she does this mainly on Instagram, and that's where she gets the most following. And what I really liked was this actually was on Facebook. Apologies, I do have a very really horrible cold at the moment, but I'm persevering. Hopefully you guys are. <clears throat> right, let's check her out. This was a live. Right. Right. 
So you get the point. Okay, so she is coming on. She's recording a podcast and she wants to do a thing. So what her job is, is that she is using social media to raise awareness of what she actually does. And in order to do that, she has come on to Facebook Live. So she's recording a podcast here with the microphone at the same time as going live on Facebook. So it is a double whammy of social media. If she wanted to, she could also cast that live. She could do it on Zoom. So that's the other thing you can do, guys. If you need to do anything like live webinars, like like what we are doing, we are currently casting to the likes of Facebook. You can do it to YouTube. You can do it to Instagram. You can do it to most of the main platforms. You can then take that video content and you can put it on YouTube later. You can slick it up a little bit. You can take it and you can put it on LinkedIn if you need to. You can turn it into snippets on TikTok. Going on video is one of the most powerful things that any business can do, whether it is a Facebook Live of, I don't know, the marketing manager walking around a shopping centre talking about an event, or whether it is you face to camera talking about all of the great things that you've got coming up in your business this week or giving top tips or doing exactly what this lady is doing. And basically saying that she's going to ruffle a few feathers and talk about how, you know, you can manifest, you know, and all of these amazing new things into your life by focusing on what you actually want and visualizing it, etc. So that's what she's talking about. Now, she's chosen to do this on Facebook. And I want to explain why. If you haven't used Facebook Live, it is so, so powerful. Instagram Live is great, don't get me wrong. But I think Facebook Live is phenomenal. So she normally has a lot of engagement on on Instagram. That's where her market is. She is marketing to independent business owners, entrepreneurs, people who want to master their mindset. There'll be lots of hashtags that she can use. Instagram is very much her place. She can get really visual. She can put her podcast on there. She can um, use all the hashtags that people are going to be engaging in, um, which is really, really great. Then you've got um, the Facebook Facebook also will have lots of communities that she should be getting engaged with. There will be um, manifestation, you know, if that's what she heard, her thing is, manifestation um, communities that she can engage in. There will be, um, there will be uh, entrepreneur groups that she can engage in. In order to engage with those, she has to have content first. So she's gone on there to basically give content. So this is free advice, her talking about how you can manifest your dreams, etc. She's done it live for a few reasons. Live, all of her followers will get a little alert on their phone that will literally be, um, you know, it'll come up saying um, uh, that she has gone live today. Then I'll get another one that will say, um, um, did you miss it? Uh, she went live, I don't know, 10 minutes ago and I can still click into it and it will go to where she is now. And then I can rewind it to go back to the beginning. Then if I missed all of those alerts, on my Facebook, if I log into, you know, if I go into my app on Facebook, I will go in there and then it'll come up with in my notification saying she was live today, which would again give me so almost like three to four times in that day to go in and check out her live. And just like I'm doing right now, once you've got the link, it is live. It is there forever. So it's done unless you take it down. It is there. People can engage with it live or I could go and engage with that now. So as she did this a couple of weeks ago, I think. And I could go in and engage with that now. She would still get an alert. And anybody who was um, engaged within her live will get that alert as well. So do you see what I mean? So it then gives you more bang for your buck because you're then able to go. Um, so the, I don't know, she got, what, 39 engagement. She's had lots of people that are sitting there um, responding back to her. All those people, Kelly, Car Carol, like all these people from all over the world by the looks of it, where they get a little alert to say that Donna has gone on and said blah, 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 or I put a link on, etc. So it is so powerful doing a live. It's so Facebook is so good for this kind of stuff. Then, as I say, people can share it. They can share it, which is great. They share it on their feed. They can share it to a group. You can also take your live and you can choose to share it to any of the groups that you are um, engaged with in any way, shape or form or connected with your page. You can take the live and you can, as I say, you can download it, turn it into other bits of content. You can take snippets of it. You can do a screen recording of it. You can turn it into a webinar later. So many different ways of doing this. But trust me when I say Facebook Live is one of the best ways of getting and Instagram Live does the same thing, and so does you know any of the other platforms really. But Facebook Live can be great. 
because then you can share it directly into a group. So if you've got a community, you can stream it live into the community. Other, you can get other people to stream it live at the same time so that it's shared on multiple places so you're getting extra reach but it does mean that you just get more bang for your buck because it's all the notifications are just so important because I don't just get a notification saying oh so and so has done a post or your business has done a post I get a notification three four or five times um, throughout. and throughout and then anytime anyone comments and engages with it once I've engaged I'll then keep getting those notifications so the power of this is huge absolutely huge also just to add in the cross um, the cross channel stuff, she's gone from Instagram to Facebook, talking about her podcast. She's pushing people wherever they need to go. If you're more of a podcast person, you might go on and suddenly listen to her podcast. If you're more of an Instagram person, you'll suddenly go back to Instagram. If you're more of an Instagram, you might go and check out her Facebook page. Either way, guess what? You're hitting her at each point. So it is just such a good idea. So if you haven't used Facebook Live, I urge you to use it. And actually, some of the people that we have featured before on here use Facebook Live really, really well for things like selling. So they use it for like showing off, you know, like how their products work. And then they do a little flash sale at the end of it. I've seen online auctions done on Facebook where, you know, once you once it's done, it's done kind of thing. Um, I see people go live to show, I don't know how a dress fits or how, I don't know, like, you know, something like how, I don't know how to do, if you're a personal trader, how to do something. Lots of different ways of doing it, but it is, it's about basically getting more bang for your buck. That's what live does. And I don't actually think we talk about it enough. This one's interesting. So this is a creative, um, so she's a marketing and sales coach. Um, and again, why would she want to use social media? So she wants to use social media ultimately because she needs to um, obviously draw attention of business owners. Um, she needs to draw attention of people who uh, basically would want to use her services as a sales coach or as a marketeer. So she has to show that actually she knows her stuff. She knows what she's doing on um, social media. So here we go. Right, so I really like that. I'll just kind of show it in the background so if you missed it. So here, growing, growing an online business, expectation versus reality. So this is your expectation. Open up an Instagram account, post a few reels, sign a client, great. And then reality, you're doing what she's doing in the background. All of this, which you might not realize. So it's the market research, authority building, um, practice planning, um, relationship building, business operations, consistency. It's all the things that actually go into running a successful business. She's not half wrong. Uh, sorry, she's not half right. Uh, um, it's crazy. Um, now, with this, so she's saying, then do me a favor, go to my caption. So you ca capture the attention with the reel. Instagram, whilst it is all changing, um, Instagram still very much favors reels as well. So just make sure you do use reels as much as you can. This one's a dead easy one to make. She's then going on to start a business is one thing, growing another successful one is another. Um, and then she's given basically the top tips. I know you want a clear plan. What if I told you it was possible to crack the code on site consistent clients, a step-by-step -step blueprint. Um, then it's basically she's selling what she's doing. Here I learned time lived strategies, um, wave goodbye to imposter syndrome and self-doubt, adios, um, to wondering where that came from. She's going to guide you into um, her tried to tested framework. Um, she used herself to scale her business from one to two K months to six figures in less than three years. So basically she's saying, you think running a business is this, let's set up an Instagram, which is fine. Actually, you need all of these things, which is terrifying, scary, massively overwhelming. Whilst you might be amazing, I don't know, as a salon owner or as a barber or as a butcher or a baker, whatever you are. Actually, it takes lots to build up um, a business. You need to be, you, know, you need to be all things to all people. You need to be an accountant. You need to be an HR manager. You need to be all these things. And unless you can afford to go out and get all of those things, here's how I can teach you how to do it. So she's, you know, basically acknowledging the pain points, the customer pain points she's acknowledging. She says, saying, actually, I had those pain points. I used to be exactly the same. She's then saying, I've got the go to ticket. Here's how I can help you do this. This is what you're going to get out of it. This is what I got out of it. So again, it's giving you that added incentive. Wow, I could get six figures. Brilliant. 
then it's giving you formal. So the feed of missing out the makes you want to take action now. Pre-sale is on now. So I say 300 pounds ends in 48 hours. So it makes you go, oh my God, right, okay, I need to do this now. She's again given more formal by saying two spots have already been stacked up. So head to link in the bio or drop me a DM to chat. So um, as you can see, people have gotten really engaged with this and they got even more engaged because she's used amazing hashtags as well to try and drive more people to her. Um, but wonderful tips, keep going. Success is not easy. It takes a lot of planning and hard work. Success is a journey. I wish more people talked about this. So people have gotten really engaged in it because you know what is true? It is hard running a business. It is hard doing, being all things to all people. It is hard when you don't know what you're doing, but you know, you've got a dream. So she's basically saying, I can help you make that dream a reality. And she's identifying with those pain points. So any business can do this. Think about your customer. Think about your target customer. Think about your services and then think about the pain points in the middle and how your service solves it. And it could be as, as simple as, I am, I don't know, a mum and I want to get my nails done. Why do you want to get your nails done? Well, actually, I want to get them done because I've got them a night out. I never get my nails done very often because I can't afford it because I'm a mum or because I am, I don't know, time poor and I never give, me, give myself the time to do it. Great. Okay. So you know these things about me and you're the nail salon. Great. That nail salon can then go talk, use content like this to go, you're tired, you're overworked. You are constantly doing the dishes, so your nails are an absolute disaster. You're doing X, Y, and Z. Um, you know that you're running around after everyone else. You deserve a bit of self care, Mama. I hear you. Um, here is how, and here's our three top tips on how you can um do it at home. But we're actually running, I don't know, a mummy deal on a Friday. It's only going to last for twenty four hours. Um, for any mums that book, you get a free hot chocolate. Oh, do you see what I mean? I've done that within ten seconds off the top of my head by taking inspiration from this post. So do you see what I mean? By literally, we can take what these people are doing and take snippets of it and turn it into something that could work for our business. That's it. why I do this week in and week out because it's so simple. You just need to sometimes take a back step from it and think, how could I do this? How could I acknowledge my pain, acknowledge the customer's pain point, show that I understand it and can empathize with it, and show them that I've got the service to do what, to, to help them with that pain point. And guess what? Get them to actually do the thing that I need them to do, which is grow my business, which is to book or to buy or whatever it might be. And I do that by doing a flash sale or 24 hours or showing that there's only three spots left. It is simple, simple stuff. We complicate things with social media all the time. We complicate things with content, but this is simple. So let's, you know, start using stuff like that in our social media more often, guys. Okay. That's what I love. <clears throat> I absolutely love it. So this is um this is a lady who normally does quite different posts. Um and she normally gives like I basically, you know, the sort of helpful tips on how to helpful tips normally on how on um, baby and child nutrition that's what she is she book, um, she's as you can see how to feed your toddler how to wean your baby her new online weaning course so everything for her is about helping parents give the best nutrition to their children and learn it from an early age right you can see everything is very much about um, about her target customer it is understanding what works for a target customer understanding their pain points exactly what i've just said with the other one right this completely different and this is about humanizing the person behind it and empathizing with your end user by showing more of you, more of the pain points that you go through, which means you understand her. So here, then versus now, things I wish I knew when Ada was a tiny baby. So that's obviously the little baby is a tiny baby. And then you can see from the images. These are all the images she had when Ada was a tiny baby that as she's grown up, super cute. So again, you could really identify because obviously she's talking to parents. So this is parents. She's got the dad, she's got the mom, she's got the kids in there. So they're lovely little steps. <clears throat> so here, number one, that however hard and relentless it feels, it will get easier and we will all make it through, that there's no need to feel guilt. So um, he will 
absolutely benefit the long run for having a strong independent little sister so let's go back to the sibling stuff that actually there was nothing wrong with ada nothing i could fix or have done she just needed time to settle into the world so let's go back to maybe she was sleep deprived or maybe i don't know she did she wasn't a great eater maybe she didn't like i don't know she didn't you know breastfeed who knows what what that was but actually the point is is that she is she is thinking about all the things that people say to her on a regular basis. She's talking about all the things that she struggled with as a mum, never talks about. And it's stuff that when mums all get together or dads all get together or things like that, but that's what they would talk about. It would be their lack of sleep. It would be their lack of, I don't know, time. It would be them fretting that, you know, I don't know, there's something wrong with their child because they only eat, I don't know, baked potatoes, whatever it might be. Um, I'm just thinking about my child now. Um, but... It is, it is, this is the first image to me it shows the heart. So it shows the human behind the business. It shows that she completely understands and empathizes with her people. She looks, she she looks gorgeous, but she looks tired. She looks overwhelmed. She looks a bit upset actually in the image. And it would definitely make me want to click on it as a mum to want to click on that. So my point is, this is going back to that understanding your customer, <clears throat> excuse me, understanding your customer, understanding their pain points and showing that you get it now I remember featuring a theater okay um on here it was during one of the, just after one of the lockdowns I think um and she obviously as a theater owner she was losing money hand over fist every day people had to cancel tickets because they've COVID or because I don't know the people that were in the show have a COVID so she was having to cancel their tickets and blah 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 and she thought what can I actually be posting about because actually things are pretty rubbish things are pretty miserable and I'm getting frustrated so do you know what she started doing at the end of each week she would show her taking and say this is how much I was supposed to you know how many tickets we were supposed to have had this week these are how many shows we we're meant to have done this is actually what I've had to do as returns. This is what I've had. To, this is what I've actually lost. I am an independent business. I do this myself. And I just want to be honest and say, actually, I'm struggling. People loved it. Not because they loved it in her misery. It's because they all connected with it. They all understood. What she did is no different to this because that built up trust. It then meant that people actually were doing more donations. People actually weren't accepting their refunds. They were going, you know what? you're an independent business owner. I don't desperately need back that 30 quid for the theatre ticket. What I'll do is I'll let's transfer it to when we can all enjoy theatre again in COVID's but done and dusted or whatever. So um, this is exactly the same. Her showing her family life, her showing all the different images, her showing the warts and all kind of approach and going into giving people some real, her show sharing her story is giving me as a mum and understand is given anybody else you know it's a loving reminder for anyone who's finding the early weeks and months hard I really did too tag a new mama who might benefit from reading this it was on international women's day so it is timely it's using a national campaign it is targeted it is raw it is true it is human connecting with human and people are much more likely to funnily enough go out and buy her book off the back of that post than off the back of half the other ones so I just absolutely loved it honestly people really connected with it and it's just it's such a nice idea so again going back to that if you understand your customers you can understand the content they need to provide but sometimes being a bit more vulnerable or actually just sh sharing the wins as well you know that like, it doesn't have to be all about vulnerability it can just be about sharing you know the great things that's going on in your business because again people want to congratulate you for that as well Now, thinking about content coming up, let's have a look at our content inspiration calendar. So for those of you guys who haven't seen this yet, this is awesome. So we talk about how you can leverage national campaigns. So think about, you know, the Oscars and all that kind of thing. These are big events going on, right? They're going on anyway. And all you need to do is look at the news or look at social media to know that those things are happening and take some content. This is you going, actually, these things are all coming up over the next six months. What could we use? The national days, the national hashtags, the national weeks, awareness weeks, things like that. What can we use within our business to either add value to drive connection, to engage more with people. What can we do? So let's have a look at, I can have a look at, because we're almost in April. We've talked a lot about April the last few weeks. So I'm going to go into May. So we've done it. We've filled all these in right up until the end of December. And we'll continue to do this because honestly, it's giving people so much value. We've had amazing feedback on this. And it means that you don't have to go and try and find national content. You don't have to look up, I don't know, what are all the national days and then make your own calendar. You literally take this and you can turn it into your own calendar. Here we go. 
So May, these are all, look at me, how many awareness days and awareness weeks and months that are in May. It is absolutely massive. So let's have a look at what you could do. I don't know what businesses we have on here, but feel free to drop it in the Q&A and I will see if I can come up with something for you right this second. Um, but right. National Teen Self-Esteem Month. Now, that couldn't most businesses do something for that, right? So couldn't the majority of businesses do something for National Teen, um, teen Self-Esteem Month? So that might be actually sharing the, I don't know, your own teenager story. It might be sharing stuff from you back in the day and how you would suggest working with parents to build up their own self-esteem it might be you linking up with a local teen charity it might be you doing a donation it might be you working with a local school there's lots of ways that you could do this all right cutie retail business all right thank you shannon right so you are a retail business you didn't say what retail business but to be fair i, I don't need to so let's take a look <clears throat> let's take a look let's take a look So if you're in retail, it depends on what retail, but obviously there's things here for maternal mental health. You've got national weaning. So it could be that you're trying to target parents. There could be, again, national days that you could focus, focus around that. So it might be working with a local charity. It might be that you do something yourself. You might go live and talk about your own story. So that's, again, go back to that connection. Oh, wait a minute. Something in the Q&A. Right. Um, so it might be that you choose one of them. It might be that um, you go a completely different route. So it might be that you want to do something that's really fun for your for your staff. So you could do something like, um, what is it? It could be Time for a Cuppa 2023. So I've done this with a shopping centre recently, where basically we just said on the on this day, the um, the whole centre management team will all be out in the mall, <coughs> sitting down on the seats and there for a chat, have a cuppa, sit down, you get a free tea and you know what, a free biscuit and you can just sit and chat to people. So that helps anybody who's feeling a bit lonely, anybody that's feeling a bit isolated, <coughs> encourages conversation, you get a free cup of tea out of it. It's just a nice thing to do. So that is about customer service. That is about adding in value. On social media, you could do that a completely different way around. You could you could publicize, I guess, you know, the coffee that you've got or the tea you've got, or it could be that on national time for a cuppa, it's anybody that comes in between these hours gets, I don't know, a free something, a free magazine or if something mindfulness so they can sit and do a little puzzle or something during that time. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Share a story month. Great time. So celebrate the power of storytelling with National Share a Story Month. Now, again, for the whole of May, could you focus on doing stories, li literally stories on Facebook and Instagram, for example? Could you do a story a week and it is featuring a member of your staff? It could be talking about their life. It could be talking about um, what they do for you. It might be, you know, like you guys talking about the story of like how your business came to light. It could be sharing customer stories so you ask them all in the month of april we want to share your stories on a subject could be mental health it could be any of these things that are there and you share a story um da, da, da. let's pick one more national walking month any business could do something for that quite literally whether you're a retail business whether you are services whether you are as i say a shopping center a bed a council could you do a step challenge with all your team and every day you put on how many steps you all manage to do and you raise money for a charity easy peasy lemon squeezy anyone could do that it's usually national stuff it gives you content it's not content you need to think about because actually it's just you sharing what you guys have done on that week it's given your it's a bit of like team building camaraderie you could do it against another business for example which could be a bit of good fun so do you see what i mean this gives you food for thought it makes you go right all these things are coming up how could i take that and do something with it because it's there, it is national, the hashtags are there, people are going to be engaging, it's all set for specific types of demographics and people, so why wouldn't I use some of this for my, um, for my uh, 
businesses. So if you don't have this calendar yet, then please like just let us know and we will send it to you because honestly, it's been a dream. I use it for all my clients. It's very good. Right. So we give you all the tools and support you need out with all of this stuff. So let, if you don't know how to use, maybe hop in on a Monday. We've got um, an amazing team who will literally teach you how to use the different aspects of maybe choose to look at social media basics, how to do a reel, how to do a story, anything like that if you're struggling. Wednesday, you've got me, <laughs> hopefully a little bit feeling better next week. Um, you've got Thursday, we do ads, we do amazing Facebook ads for beginners, so literally how to do an ad. Friday is advanced ads, so there's amazing things that you can learn on how to do ads yourself and you can increase your conversion, so please pop on there. And then we've got always on, so all the on-demand training, so it's all the extra stuff that we sit and record in the background, it's all sitting there on our little video hub, and it's there for you. So literally everything from how to do a Google business profile right through to a case study on a butcher in Aberdeen and how they used reels to boost their engagement. So it's all there for you guys. So the key takeaways for me are <clears throat> tips and um, tips and talking to people's pain points can truly add value to social media. So that's the accountant, that was the coach, that was the nutritionist. They all understood people's pain points how to and how to hone in on them and how their service could solve that. And that was using tips and it was using connection and story. Keep up with current trends and events if you want to increase engagement. So that again is going back to the Oscars, the Super Bowl. It was, you know, like any big football events that are coming up, anything at all that's coming up, make sure you keep it up to date on them and then follow things like hashtag meme of the day and things because honestly, you will get amazing content. You just repurpose it and share it yourself. It's great. Try different things on different channels to test the water. You might have a podcast, try publicizing it on Facebook, try doing a Facebook Live, try doing an Instagram Live, try going on Zoom, but it's casting across all of them because you can do it. So why not? Add value always. So make sure you're adding tips, adding help, adding solutions, sharing from other businesses that might connect with your, your target audience. Show the real people behind your business. It is so powerful but people buy for people no matter what kind of business you are people buy for people that they trust people buy for people that they like people buy for people that they want to support so whether you've got a sad story to share a happy story to share a member of staff's done something amazing it doesn't matter make sure you're share 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 on social media it just gets started with this if you've not already got your account get set up and start learning from other brands and remember tomorrow, I send you guys on a Thursday, a weekly email with all the links in it. So you can download the content calendar. You can get signed up to any of the trainings. There's new blogs that we've got. There's new case studies. So we're just there to give you as much social media inspiration as we can. So